So are you having some kind of problem uh, when you're shooting, throwing shots off to the left or to the right, down a little bit? Uh, if you're left-handed, it might go to the right. If you're right-handed, it might go to the left. We all know those notorious left-right low issues with shooters often has to do with something in their grip or in the trigger finger in general and how they're pulling the trigger. The, the solution for that is generally an adjustment with the trigger finger. But there's another issue that has to do with, that doesn't have anything to do with your grip or your trigger finger. It has to do with your, your nerves and your emotions. And that is the question, are you flinching? You're not? How do you know? Let me show you what I see all the time when I'm working with newer, fairly inexperienced shooters, or some, even some people that have been shooting for two or three years that shoot just every once in a while. They're having some kind of problem. I get out and I watch them, and here's what I'll see. When they run out of ammo, here's what I see. Yeah. Pushing, pushing, pushing. You see, up here, right in through here, nothing should be happening. There should be no movement in that. The only movement that should be happening when you're shooting is this finger right here. <laughs> of course, the recoil is going to move your hand, but nothing that you're doing should be anything other than moving that finger right there. Recoil anticipation is one of the greatest <laughs> is one of the greatest villains when it comes to causing people to shoot off left, right, low, whatever. And it's often mistaken for something in the grip. And people just scratch their heads going, well, I've corrected my grip. I'm thinking about my trigger finger. I'm pressing, not pulling. I'm not jerking the trigger. They make all kinds of, of, and they get up close to the target and they move back. But still, what's happening? I had to work with my daughter for quite a few years until she got over that right there. Now, when my daughter, and I, I started training her as, as a teenager, as a young teenager. And, but there, there was always this flinch, flinch, flinch. Until she hit about 20, 21 years old, I told her, walk up to that target up there, get comfortable, I'm gonna back off and I'm not gonna tell you anything. <laughs> That's when she stopped flinching. Whatever you're, whoever else is watching you, whatever you may have been told, the reality is that recoil is just a part of the dynamics of the gun. If this gun, if this gun did not recoil, it wouldn't work normally. That's the reason. There's no flinching, there's no flinching in my arm because I'm so used to it, I understand it, it doesn't bother me, I actually enjoy it. But what you have to do to stop flinching is you have to mentally work your way through it. A good way to do it at home is to work right up next to a, to a target, get right up close to within a foot or so of a target, aim at it and start pulling the trigger, dry firing your gun. Do it over and over and over and over again. And when you get back to the range, transfer what you did at home with no ammo to what you're doing with ammo. Do the same thing. In other words, do the, you don't, it, when you're at home practicing in front of a cardboard target or something else and you're just pulling, dry firing, and you're pulling the trigger, you're not flinching because you know that thing's not going to go off. Do the same thing with ammo, but you have to think through it. You have to relate what you did at home. You have to relate that to what you're about to do and think. No flinch, no flinch, no flinch. Keeping that gun as still as possible, even though the gun's going to recoil. You know it doesn't hurt. You've been using it for a while. It doesn't hurt you. But flinching is one of the worst, is, is one of the worst, again, it's one of the worst villains that I've seen in people that had the kind of, have the, this kind of problem. Where it's not in their grip, it's not in the trigger pull, it's in this constant tension. It's, and it's funny because you hear people tell you, experienced shooters and trainers tell you, get a death grip on that gun. But at the same time, people are telling you to relax. Well, it means get that death grip on that gun. Get that good, strong grip and good, strong arm placement. Straighten it all out and stiffen it up and get it there. But it means mentally and emotionally relax when you do it. Flinching is not something I can deal with here with this ammo with my guns here. I've already showed you what it is. You have to pay attention to what you're doing. Get your gun out. Pay attention to your own hands and arms. Get somebody else to watch you. Because if you're flinching, you may, you may have been working on your grip, you, you even think there's something wrong with your gun. Have somebody watch you, begin to mentally watch yourself. Because if you're doing this, that can be corrected. It can be corrected doing a little bit of work at home or, or even coming out to the range and just dry firing, dry firing, dry firing, dry firing, and then relating that to what you do with, with ammo in your gun, and it will reduce and stop eventually that flinching. Learn to embrace that 
<laughs> that recoil and enjoy it and don't flinch. Don't get tense over it. Get your good strong grip and arm placement, but don't get tense over that recoil because it's not going to hurt you. No flinching. It'll fix what a whole lot of you are dealing with when you know your grip and your trigger pull is good. It'll fix a whole lot for you. I'm Mark Rogers. I hope this helps some of you. And I'll see you again very soon in another Christian Gun Owner video.